And now, for our next cyanotic heart disease, we're going to talk about hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And unlike tricuspid atresia, where the right ventricle was partially hypoplastic and thus still functional, in hypoplastic left heart syndrome, the left ventricle is basically dysfunctional and does not have any pumping ability. That's the easiest way to understand this condition, so you should consider this to be a complete failure and lack of function of the left ventricle. So the pathophysiology is you have a hypoplasia of the left ventricle and proximal aorta. So both the left ventricle and proximal aorta are no longer functional and cannot be used for blood transport. You also have a atresia of the aortic and mitral valves, so you can't pump blood into the left ventricle or out of the left ventricle. Very important defect here, which will play a major role as we'll see later on. It's also commonly associated with an atrial septal defect. Why? Because the oxygenated blood that enters the left atrium from the lung, it has to find a way to come back into systemic circulation, and it can't do that through the left ventricle and aorta, so it needs to go across the atrial septal defect into the right atrium, mixed with the deoxygenated blood, making hypooxygenated blood, and the right ventricle has to pump to the lung circulation and also through the PDA to the aortic circulation. It's a very complicated mechanism here because you notice a small left ventricle and absent, absent ascending aorta. So all of this is damaged, and because of that, you need a bypass tract, and this is the way it bypasses. So one more time, in order to get blood supply to the systemic circulation of the body, the blood that enters the left atrium from the lungs needs to cross over the atrial septal defect or patent foramen valve, mixed with the uh, deoxygenated blood from the body, and send hypooxygenated blood into the right ventricle and throughout the circulation to the pulmonary and the body circulations. So as you can tell, a PDA is necessary for survival. Without a patent duct arteriosis, how would you ever get any blood into the aorta? You wouldn't be able to, so you need to have this be open for the infant to survive. Cyanosis is caused by oxygenated blood entering the left atrium from the lungs. Left ventricle is hypoplastic, so the oxygenated blood goes from left atrium to right ventricle. And I said earlier, it's going through an atrial septal defect. It would not be through a patent foramen ovale, so disregard the previous statement about patent foramen ovale. A PFO can only be a right to left shunt, but an atrial septal defect can be left to right. You now have mixed desaturated blood in the right atrium, going to the right ventricle, going to the pulmonary artery, and also going to the PDA into the body. So that's why you get a cyanotic heart disease in this condition. So signs and symptoms. So as we talked about, the PDA is closed, which happens in 24 to 48 hours after birth. The patient will die because there will be no blood going to the systemic circulation, and you need that for tissue function. So the heart will not be able to meet metabolic demands if the PDA is closed. So you keep it open using PGE1. So you get heart failure symptoms because the heart can't pump into systemic circulation, and these will happen in the first 24 to 48 hours of life. So PGE1 is absolutely necessary. Next, we have a loud single S2. Why? because there's no aortic valve. So the only valve present is the pulmonic valve, which has very high pressures distal to it because it's pumping all the blood into the circulation. You get a systolic flow murmur through the pulmonary valve as well because all the blood flowing through it. So let's talk about some more signs and symptoms. You get heart failure symptoms, including the ones you see here, and all of these are due to the fact that the right ventricle has to pump to the entire body, and the right ventricle is not designed to do that. Some physical exam findings you get are hyperactive precordium, Remember, there's a lot of blood going to the lungs and a lot of blood in the right ventricle, so you'll get a hyperactive precordium as a result. You'll also get a parasternal heave, right ventricular hypertrophy, because you have so much blood going to the right side, the right ventricle is going to become dilated and hypertrophic. You also get cool cyanotic extremities, we talk about why there's cyanosis, and diminished pulses because you can only get blood to the aorta through the PDA, so not as much blood is able to read systemic circulation. This is an interesting point. Why would you get a worsened metabolic acidosis if you give supplemental oxygen. So this is a very key point here because if you give supplemental oxygen, what happens to the pulmonary vascular resistance in the lungs? Right, it goes down. You have decreased resistance, right? But the whole purpose of hypoplastic left heart syndrome and the whole problem here is not enough blood is reaching systemic circulation. So if you decrease the amount of if you decrease the amount of resistance in the pulmonary vasculature by giving oxygen, where is the blood going to flow? Systemic circulation or to the lungs? Right, to the lungs. And that's not going to be helpful because you already are not meeting the demands of the body. So getting more blood to the lungs will actually make the problem worse. So do not give supplemental oxygen in a patient with hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So diagnosis. Definitive diagnosis is always by echo. 
and EKG will show right axis deviation and right ventricular hypertrophy because the right heart is the one that's supplying the entire body, including the lungs. Chest X-ray will show increased pulmonary vascular markings because of more blood going through the pulmonary vasculature, leading to pulmonary edema and congestion. You also get cardiomegaly because the right heart is overwhelmed with pressure and volume. So now for the treatment, PGE1 is necessary for survival, as we spoke about earlier. And you want to ventilate infants not with hypersaturated oxygen, but room air or hypoxic air, because if you give too much oxygen, you will cause more blood to go away from the systemic circulation and worsen the problem. And finally, the definitive treatment, like always, is surgical repair.